what they did. You're a five star. You've been a five star. I was just much part of there. Listen, man, University of Miami fans want to know one thing. Do they, do, does University of Miami have a chance to get James Wooden? Definitely do have a chance. Welcome to South Florida. When you when you when you on the field, is it pregame? Like, is it ever? You ever? Are you ever afraid? Does you ever feel fear, or do you ever feel pressure? Nervous, nervous. You ever feel pressure? Not one bit. No, no, none of that. No. Who, who's your who, who, who's been your tough defender? Like, who's guarded you the tough? Yeah, who's the tough person? I don't see nobody. I knew nobody. He was gonna give it the damn hood. I'm a playmaker. I just, I, I love receiving. I love to catch the ball. I love to go over people's head. Yeah. You know I mean? So I just got to do what I do. University of Miami, they land you, and then they land the number one, we call them football player, number one player in the nation, James Williams. Yeah. Both playing the same position, right? How do you envision that working? Are they telling you how that's going to work? Or? Uh, well, I feel like me and James, two different safeties. Uh huh. And I'm more of the ball hogging safety. He's more of the rangey playing like you couldn't say like in the box, but like a striker position, strong safety. Right. And I'm more of the free safety. So I already know in practice that's gonna just build great competition. And when the game comes, it's gonna be easy. That's what's up. I know we go hand in hand because it's like like we're the same person. Right. So he has like his strengths and weaknesses, and I have my strengths and weaknesses. And we're gonna just he can feed off of me, learn how to I guess. Be more of the free safety, and then I can learn off of him. Be more of like a, a close to the closer right. to the box safety. Right. So I feel like we're just gonna make each other better. Yeah, James. James um played free safety. He wanted to play free safety. He he was big on that. But James don't never be back at free safety. James be <laughs> James be close to the line. The linebacker yeah. sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that I mean that's his. That's, that's him. Yeah. You know, his team win. That's his chess. Yeah, that's it. That's him playing chess with the team. I totally yeah. get. It. I, I, now I did. I covered James since he was that big. Bro. I've known him. I've known him all his life. I just feel like every time it's, it's just man on man. If if they win, if he wins the battle, then that goes to play. He doesn't right. break on the run, or if this person like doesn't take that step or certain certain things. It just I feel like you beat your man every play. Right. And you got the best chance to stop any team or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Five star. Six twelve, two hundred and seventy six pounds. After that, I just started going crazy. Tackles after tackles. Yeah, the first play was like a tackle for loss, for like six. Yeah. Oh, they didn't touch you, like. <laughs> yeah, like they did. Explain to me, though. Like, what what is that about? Like, how do they not? You six five, three hundred pounds. Is it something? Is a swim move? Is something you do? Like, they don't see you. You yeah. teleporting. What's going on? Too too fast for long. They don't realize you that yeah. fast when the game starts. Like, I'm gonna be the best player on the field. Like, I just gotta show the world. Like, I'm the true 50. I'm the next 56 of the next. I'm gonna just go crazy this year. Like, show people like Wawa wow, 56. Like, show show them like I want to take care of my mom. I want to put in a big house, stupid cars, big pool in the backyard. Put on for my brothers. My nieces and nephews, like coaches, I think all of them boys for like having me here at this like position that I'm in now. Cause like it's a hard work and dedication without all of them to guide me in the right path. I wouldn't be here today. So I think all of them for like helping me out. Like, yeah.
What's good, man? Y'all let me know in the comment section where y'all from, man. Drop the city in there. Let me know where y'all from. I like to see. I like to see where y'all from. Where y'all boys punching in from? Let me know in the comment section, big dog. <clears throat> where y'all from? I ain't, I'm not, I, I ain't, should I hide all you motherfuckers and I can fire all y'all, excuse my French, but I, I, I don't want to be the smartest person. <laughs> right, right. And if I am the smartest person in the, in this corporation and I know everything, then we're going to lose. And that's do why. You, do you feel don't. you have to always remind people? Do you, do you, Mario would always have to remind. Do you think you have to remind people that or well, eventually they'll, they'll, no, it's your presence. Got you. When football field step up on the yard, all the other motherfucking uh, websites and, and podcasts, they back the fuck up. You ain't got to go tell them motherfucker, hey, football field out here. No, no, no. The kids know. The other motherfuckers around you know. Everybody know. Oh, shit. There you go. God damn it. He finna hijack the show. Right. Right. I appreciate that, man. I got a question for you, man. You gonna answer it? I answer any question. I want you to I want you to explain this to my people. When you got mad about Ryan Collins back in the days, right? Because they wasn't going to start him or something like that, right? About 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 the about the quarterback in University of Miami and they weren't starting the black guy. What was his name from Miami Lakes? Ryan Collins. When you got mad about that, right, and then you you threatened, hey, listen, if y'all do this, I don't know what your verbiage was. I turn all the motherfuckers in, right? Why were you so mad? Yeah, well, Bush Davis had came in, mm -hmm. and he did a. They interviewed him, and he said that Ryan Collins won't be the starting quarterback. Okay. Now this is after. Ryan Collins was the starting quarterback for the, I think maybe the, the last, I know definitely the last, the last year, yeah. but then probably the last two years he took the job. He, he had like 500 yards passing and shit. He had some passing percentage yeah. up under like 97% or some shit. Right. And he was, you know, running the ball, doing all this. So Bush came in. And said, oh, he's not going to be my quarterback. Now, back then, it was no such thing as transfer portal. Your ass going to have to sit out and all that. I thought that was racist. That for him to not even evaluate this young man, but not even give a damn about what he did uh, as a quarterback. So I thought it was racist. And so uh -huh. at that time, they were investigating the university. They were sitting in NCAA investigators in my house and all this shit. And I was like, oh, so I made a, I made a statement to a reporter and he took the bitch completely <laughs> out of context. Right. I was like, I'm being investigated. Yeah, I got these fucking uh, NCAA motherfuckers coming to my house and shit and all that there. And they trying to get the University of Miami to the fucking death penalty and everything like that. And then and then I met, I said, well, shit, if they if, if they if they don't uh, start Ryan Collins, then they might get a damn self a death penalty. So then the guy lumped all that shit in to one and said, Luther Campbell says he's gonna fucking get <laughs> tell everything if Miami gonna get the death penalty. Luke, listen, because now we got these black platforms where, where you guys feel like you can come on and talk comfortably. Why do you feel like you have to be the voice for Ryan Clemens? Could you please, Ryan Collins, could you please explain that to people? Because, I mean, because even back then, I, now, back then, before, I I have a platform. And I know right. if I say certain things, I defend certain people. If I put my name on certain things, then people will listen. Versus 
the guys at the barber shop where we go get our hair cut, they sell a bunch of shit in the barber shop, but it never leaves the door because the barber ain't he don't have a platform. He has a he don't have a big name where shit. If if half the shit in the barber shop, <laughs> and you know, you know, I have the shit that he said. Because one, because you're sitting in the shop and there's a whole bunch of people sitting in the chair and we had open discussions. That that's you know the Bible said fuck half the shit if if half the shit is said that was in the Bible shop you know shit. The motherfucker Bible knows everything. The motherfuckers in there know everything. The motherfucker because again they cutting everybody hair. They sitting there listening. <laughs> right. Shit. Right, they getting that shit from everywhere, so they get more information than anybody. Some motherfuckers sitting there texting, they looking down at your goddamn text. Now you talking, and they they get more information than they ever got before. They were getting information you thought it was, but but again, you know, I, I just I felt like I was probably the only person could say it. The media at the time, and even right now. Uh -huh. Unlike, well, not not now because there are platforms like your platform and other right. black outlets that are getting the message out. You know, the media at the time, there was no black representation in the Miami Herald. Zero. So Ed Pope, so the Miami Herald, which I call, you know, in Sun Sentinel propaganda machines, they're going to write, They those, those guys are going to write from their perspective. And their perspective is not our perspective. Right. Their perspective is from a white perspective, and they don't see a color problem. Most yeah. white people, when I put on my shit, and you probably too, when you say something is racist, they don't understand it. What do you mean? Why do you always got to say it's racist? Uh, there's no such thing as racism in this country. You know, they don't get it. You know, and yeah. so, so I, 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 I said that. I jumped out there and said what I said. Uh, and the Ryan Collins situation, and that kind of forced Butch to to play him. Uh, but it was fair. I mean, God, you, you, you how did he do when he gets? You wouldn't do that to a white quarterback. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't come in like right now. Uh, <laughs> the starting quarterback, uh, uh, University of Miami, Van Dyke. Van Dyke Mario wouldn't come in and say no shit like that to Van Dyke after. He, after the year that he had, that same situation. Ryan Collins had the same year, or maybe better, somewhere around the same numbers that Van Dyke had, and Mario get the job. Mario ain't for to come in and tell throw Van Dyke in the fucking garbage <laughs> or Garcia. He actually said the opposite. He said Van Dyke one of the top quarterbacks and best quarterback in the nation. And 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 now he had a first round quarterback that the Dolphins should have got. This coming from a coach that had a first round quarterback right. uh, two years ago. Right. Right. Uh -oh. Now, I wanted you to explain that, bro, because you know why I asked you that. You've been doing this shit a long time. You know, you know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got these hackers. <laughs> they want to say shit. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, right. hey, look, they listen, no matter how many times me and you, you ask me and I explain. My position, you know, on coaches at Miami, uh, uh, players that Miami didn't offer that went to other schools and they want to say I'm supporting other schools. No matter how many times we say it, these narrow minded, small minded haters are going to just they, they just they just got to hate. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that's the way of the world. I mean, Jesus Christ you know, walk the lands and no matter how many people they he saved and no by no means are we even in the category of Jesus Christ. But right. no, but no matter how many people he saved, they still had haters running around saying, Oh, he ain't the son of God. He ain't saving nobody. He ain't this. He ain't that and he and you know and no they didn't this group didn't put him on the cross. Well how the hell did he get on the cross? <laughs> so I have no problem with that. So, if that yeah. if the, if, the, if that the the mightiest mighty of men take the hate and just keep on down the path. Boom! What yeah. you gotta do, man? Fuck that. Listen. That, so that, so you I, said it don't matter, huh? You said it don't even matter, street. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't. It don't matter. You just keep doing what you do. I you, appreciate that. Bro. You keep doing what you do, and that's it. Because I mean, you gotta I, yeah. live with yourself. Because people people don't see 
They don't see what I see the things that you do no different than you as a young black rapper saying, fuck this. I'm finna fight for all rappers coming behind me. And we finna lay on the fucking cross. We finna go to jail and we're gonna get this shit right. We're gonna be able to say what we wanna say in our music. And you're still the same person in football and in, in politics. You know what I'm saying? You're still the same person fighting, and motherfuckers without vision can't see that. Hey, and, and uh, you can't see it, but but the, but the thing is, you know, I I, I I I quit every day. I quit because sometimes the haters, you know, it'd be so much hate, and I'd be like, what the fuck am I doing this? I don't need to do this shit. I could be with the rest of the rock. I could be over at Puff Daddy house with all with Lil Wayne and and fucking Nikki and motherfucking. <laughs> Drinking all them drinking uh cosmopolitans and listening to music and, and jumping up and down the pool with the girls. I ain't gotta be going to football practice. I don't have to be going to these community meetings. I don't have to uh be raising money and taking kids on college tours. I'm taking away from my fucking family. What the fuck am I doing this shit for? You know, you know, I don't have to be the voice of, of the people or the silent majority. You know, I ain't gotta go to my youth program out there and go fight the city for money. Uh, in the county for money to be put into the program so that the kids can be able to have the top of the line teachers and be able to go travel around the world. But you know what? When I go look at them kids and I and I and I when I look at them, them kids, I say it always remind me when they had a little smile on their face. This is what I'm doing it for because I know I was a kid growing up in Libby City and we didn't have all this. We didn't have, we couldn't go out of town. Right. Got out, you know what I'm saying? We couldn't do things. We we didn't have the opportunity. So, shit, man. I I look at them and that shit bring my ass back. It brings me back. You know, I I I go to my little high school over there. Yeah, you know, in a minute I'll be on the highway. You know, driving down there, going away <laughs> from my job because right. I have so much. I got work stacked up. You know. Uh, publishing deals, music deals, cat catalogs, uh, TV contracts and shit. I got a whole bunch of that shit I can look at, but I put it to the side until I get back. People don't see that. Why you know though? But why, I don't care. Why though? Because, though? Why? Yeah, I do it because I, I, you know, when I look at, you know, when I look at these kids and I see that, you know, they don't have an opportunity. They don't right. have an out. Right. You know, uh, I love going out. I could be, you know, you my my friends be playing golf. You know, all these top athletes that have so much information that they could be pouring into some other young people. I say to myself, man, I, I love doing this shit. I, I love going out there, helping them, you know, navigate. What's going on, man? Get <clears throat> coin the ball. That, that was just Luke from yesterday, letting y'all hear some of it, uh, a little piece of it. Uh, wanted, wanted to get that out there. Um, the part where, the Ryan Collins part, I could play that every day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his perspective on Ryan Collins, why he said what he said, and partially the reason why a lot of people hate him. Um, so listen, man, a lot going on, man. Shout out to Reggie Wayne getting a coaching job. Shout out to Reggie Wayne. Ain't no Reggie Wayne wanted to coach. You feel me? There you go. He wanted to coach. Just shout out to him. Uh, scrolling at the bottom, 786-405-9499. If you want to get down with IOD squad, I see y'all getting the IOD squad before Friday and them NFTs drop. <laughs> I see y'all getting in. I see y'all getting in. I see y'all getting in. So if you want to get down with um. IOD investor die for the people that's new, but I see we getting new subscribers and don't really know. Uh, I can't keep assuming. Investor die is basically a platform where we have a community where we talk about NFTs, stocks, and we trade stocks, and we actually let you see us trading stocks. You can actually see what we trade. Um, hey, to this this morning we got into Lucid. It's a play. We got in a lucid. We say we're going to get out of lucid at $23, whatever, whatever. Or if it goes down to $20, we're going to get out of stop loss, lose your 10%. But you can watch us trade 
and ask questions and then you around like we around like-minded people that are learning how to trade and, and understanding nfts and crypto and and you and basically you just come watch what we do and you can copy what we do if you if you if you feel like you want to copy what we do we're not going to force you but yeah because trading there's so many different directions you can go into with trading so many different directions that it's like being in the woods without a compass. So sometimes if you had a guide, it'll see you on the right path and then you just create your own path. Um, hope that makes sense to people. Um, so yeah, that's what IOD squad is. Um, so IOD squad would be the first to get the NFTs, then the members, then the public. But IOD squad is, is, our, is our discord that we created to try to get more people involved with trading and understand NFTs early, crypto early, and so we don't always get left behind. The ones not in the know. Always getting left behind. Them people. I'm talking to y'all trading right now. So what's up, man? What's going on, man? What we got? Let me see what we got going on, man. Got people from Orlando in here. Luke was a little off on the Ryan Collins. <laughs> Luke was a little off on the Ryan Collins TVD stat comparison. <laughs> I mean, you got what he was trying to say. Columbia, South Carolina in here. We got Duval in the house, Clueston, Florida. Sean said Footballville is lit more and more every time you see it. What my badge is that, man? We got Chris Young with a badge. There goes Sean Round. Sean Round's off in this thing with the 12, had the, tw the 12 badge. If y'all don't know what the badges are, you know what I'm saying? The badges are how long you've been a member. Sean, Sean, the only one I see in here with the 12. Uh, Willie, uh, Willie Boston, my bad, dog. Willie Boston got the 12. DMV Kane, shout out to DMV Kane. He got two. Shout out to um, DMV Kane. He got two. Um, shout out to Coach Hayes' mama. Coach Hayes' mama bad got number 36. Coach Hayes' mama been down with football real for, oh, you know, 36, 36, for three years. She was here before all y'all. Right under the desk. Shout out to Big Q with the new member badge. Shout out to Ronnie Borfa with his new member badge. Orlando Bar boys in Baltimore watching football field, dog. It was all a dream. It used to read murder up magazines. <laughs> no, no, it was the first thing came to my mind, man. It was, it was all a dream. Started covering football with an SD camera, man. Now I got people in Baltimore <laughs> watching football field. Margate, Florida. That boy there got old eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar high. Um, and we're gonna talk about the NFTs. We're gonna bring Rich on here again, and we're gonna talk about the NFTs, how you get in, how you buy them. Today we're gonna hit on gas prices, uh, Polygon, so Polygon, Ethereum. Why we using what we using? Um, the difference between the two. So what's going on, man? What's going on? I see, I don't know about y'all Twitter, but I see Twitter them added a, a, a vote down button. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's on everybody Twitter yet, but I saw it on mine, dog. Twitter them added a, a, a down vote button. I think YouTube going away from the, the dislikes and Twitter adding hate. It says Teddy Bridgewater, NFL quarterback from the crib, says seven on seven is like playing football in PE. And Teddy actually plays seven on seven. It was yeah. hmm. and Teddy actually plays seven on seven. It's the Instagram football via Instagram. Um, yeah, right here. 
I'll vote button now. <laughs> Let me know below who Twitter page y'all going to first. Let me know below. <laughs> Ain't nothing good coming out of this. Ain't nothing good. Ain't nothing good, <laughs> so Ain't nothing good coming out of this. <laughs> Let me know below who Twitter page y'all going to first. Let me know below. Ain't nothing good coming out of this. Literally. Literally. <clears throat> so Twitter got a down vote button now. <laughs> Let me know below who Twitter page y'all going to first. Let me know below. Ain't nothing good coming out of this. Literally. Ain't nothing good coming out of this. <clears throat> so Twitter got a down vote button now. Ain't nothing good coming out. Ain't nothing good coming out of that. So Twitter got a down vote button now. So Twitter done added a down vote button. Twitter trying to start some. Eh. He has done started something. Twitter trying to get it started, ain't they? Do y'all Twitter have a down vote button? Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> this is... It's too much this morning, big dog. <laughs> what daughter you got in your class, dog? Yo, street, I got your daughter in my class, dog. <laughs> what daughter you got in my class, dog? First of all, you know, whatever daughter you got in your class, man, look at her, tell her, tell her dad say you love her to death for. Now, what daughter, what daughter you got in your class, dog? <laughs> my daughters, my kids, though, that's a, that's a touchy situation, fool. You know what I'm saying? I got two that I've had been fighting. I got four I've been fighting for forever. Two I, I just won. They, they, they stay here with me now. You know what I'm saying? You got Sydney in your class? Bro, listen. I haven't seen Sydney in... A year or two, two, two years maybe. Um, and Daddy's been fighting for her for a, a, a long time. Um, it's in court now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just tell her I love her, man. I and she's here. She's here in 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 Broward, man. Um, I miss Sydney, dog. I miss Sydney and Layla. Yeah, dog. Um, yeah, it's her and her sister. I've been fighting for for a while, bro. And I talk about it on here a, a lot, um, a lot, man. Um, um, I appreciate you for saying that though, dog. I do. You ain't do nothing wrong. I appreciate you for saying that though, dog. I, I I do. Um, I broke up with Sydney Mom, man, years ago. And I it, it's just a long story. I've had I, I had custody of them. It was a temporary order. They stopped it. I was paying thirteen hundred a month and then it they stopped it. They stopped the money, they stopped visitation. And I've been fighting for them for since, you know what I'm saying? Um but it's been tough, some of the decisions I've had to make. But it's in court, man. It eventually, it eventually, it eventually worked itself out, dog. I mean, it will. It will. Um, Where was I at, man? I lost, lost my focus, man. Y'all <laughs> brought up Sydney and Layla, man. That's why sometime before the show started, I say, sell Sydney and Layla, I love them. Um, I don't know what they thought or what they think of dad, you know what I'm saying? Their perception of dad. Um, 
because if they don't watch these shows, it's either coming from their mom. Uh, I was there from the beginning. I raised Sydney till she was maybe two, Layla till she was seven. Um, but everything else is just, you know what I'm saying? Whatever their mom and their current family thinks, you know what I'm saying? Until, and until we get into court, until they stop continuing cases and we get into court. And get them back, and get them back. I mean, time will time will fix everything, man. But just tell our love a big dog, and I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was about to show y'all something, dog. What was I about to show y'all? <laughs> Oh, Teddy Bridge. Come on, West the Bulls. <laughs> not a football bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Teddy Bridge. Y'all heard that. Y'all heard that. Teddy Bridge was a Miami Dolphin, man. You know what's free is? Come on, West the Bulls. <laughs> not a football bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Teddy Bridge was a man. You know what's free is? Come on, West the Bulls. <laughs> not a football bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Teddy Bridge was a man. Teddy Bridgewater's a Miami Dolphin dog. Yeah, Cal, but shit, man, it ain't. <laughs> Life ain't, you know what I'm saying? Life ain't, uh. <laughs> it ain't, shit. Life ain't fair, man. I mean, you gotta persevere. Persevere and, 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 and fight the way the way the people say you gotta fight. Um, I guess Teddy Bridgewater is coming to back up tour. Uh, that's a viable backup. Um, I always like Teddy Bridgewater, man. To me, it just seemed like he always end up in the team or taking over a team, man. When he had some weapons at New Orleans, he, 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 he was on fire. You ask me, you feel me? Um, Yeah, when he when he um when he when he came in for Drew Brees at New Orleans, I felt that um I felt that you saw. I mean, we could pull up his numbers, but he was on fire, dog. But it seems like he always get put in this position where the team and Somebody hurt and everybody is. <laughs> I don't know. How to, it just seems like he always get these part these getting these teams where it's like part this and, and this wouldn't miss it. And when he was in Carolina, the running back got hurt, and you know the running back was the team fool. So he's coming to Miami, dog. Um, <laughs> I mean, y'all tell me Teddy going to take two a job. <laughs> I don't think so, man. Y'all think Teddy going to take two a job? I don't think so, man. I brought up, I brought up, when Teddy, they, they named Teddy the start of Carolina, man. I brought 50 Teddy rookie cards around here somewhere. <laughs> Cause I just believe in Teddy, man. I just thought I thought that listen, man, Teddy get a shot. He could he could make a run with a team. It just seemed like the situation to be shitty. I don't know, dog. Maybe I'm, I'm not my homer. I don't know. It just seemed like the situations that he be in be just suck, dog. Your boy Kane. Hey, send me a text. 786-459-499. Um, your boy Kane. Send me a text. 786-459-499. So yeah, man, Teddy to Teddy to Miami. 
people had mixed feelings about that, man. People always got something crazy to say. Um, also with mixed feelings, man, is this Brownlee situation. Brownlee said he was coming home, man. People saying crazy stuff on his Twitter. So I made a post. I made a post last night about the, one of the greatest football commercials ever. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell y'all a backstory on this. And this was Brownlee's Care City Chiefs. Check it out. This a full, I can't make this full. I could have sworn I could make this full screen. Let me see. I make other do full screen all the time, don't I? But I guess you can't do full screen with these. significant y'all see about that video what y'all what's <laughs> who do y'all notice in that video who do y'all notice in that video what's significant about that video <laughs> sound like a beat he made in 2003 Oh, the, the production on Battle is, 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 I mean, that's like, uh, that's like, hey, as I said, hey, check the email. The production is like, um, I mean, yeah, the production is made for the video. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hippolyte, yeah. <laughs> and Coach Hippolyte. Coach Hippolyte went through the coaching ranks fast, though. He was a head coach of maybe three, four years, maybe, I think. He went through the coaching ranks fast. Uh, very fiery dude, though, though. Very fiery dude. That Kara City team, 
Real, real fast, real fast. I'm gonna show y'all this and tell y'all a quick story. Um, so, oh, there go Jarvis Brownlee. He commented right there. I just realized that 48 minutes ago. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Um, right here, Battle CEO um, commented on that. That's the owner of Battle. He runs Battle. Battle the, the, the clothes that the kids wear. Um, look, man, break your dudes. I mean, I know Brownlee, Brownlee, he commented on the video. Let's see what he said. It looked like he put the shh. Let me see. Look like he put. Look like he put the. Sh <laughs> but the reason. But the reason. The reason I I posted this. Is because dog. Is because. My thing is, and Brownlee knows this because I know Brownlee and I know this. I know his family. Uh, Brownlee went viral with me the time at the South Florida Express, um, tryouts when the boys slapped him. He was at DB. The boy was at wide receiver. The boy slapped him, and Brownlee jammed him. I think I think this is how the story went. Brownlee jammed him after he slapped him and like slammed him. It was it was it was a it was a it was a a, a, a testament of 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 um. <laughs> it was like you know what I'm saying. It was like show me a video on how to deal with adversity. <laughs> and you, the boy slapped him because the kid sometimes the wide receiver slapped the DB sometime off the line, right? The boy slapped Brownlee. Now nah, Brownlee is a is a Brownlee, and if you're from Miami, you know he's a Brownlee. If you're from Miami, you know Brownlee shook it off, jammed him, and I think slammed him, and he went viral. Uh, but I, I I made this I, I made this post because and another thing is oh the, well, the battle CEO I told y'all uh, that's Chris the battle CEO. I and I'm I'm gonna tie this story together. Um, I said, I've seen many kids leave South Florida ready to play just to be let down at the next level. Miami Central coach AJ has said, how is my 18-year-old better than your 22-year-old? Is it possible that a player can be developed in high school and arrive to college prepared to play, sometimes more prepared than the kids on the current college roster? I once asked my former Hurricane quarterback, uh, I once asked former Hurricane quarterback Ja'Cory Harris when he came to our show, was he smarter than his first OC in college, which was Patrick Nix? He said yes. It was how he said yes, which convinced me. He didn't even think twice. Like he had already came to that conclusion. I say all this to say Jarvis Brownlee left Miami a baller, ready to go. So did Stanford Samuels. And then I added Battle Sports because it's their video, um, the greatest football commercial ever made. Because talking to Chris, Years ago, maybe four years ago, me and Chris was talking on the phone and I was telling him how this commercial, dog, is one of the most epic commercials ever made. And his issue was, <laughs> and his issue was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, I'm going to take y'all full circle with this story. If I'm leaving y'all alone. I met Chris years before that from battle. I had a picture of Mari Daniels holding up the battle sign, right? And I hit Chris on Twitter and I said, hey, listen, this before battle was big when they were just giving out gloves. And I said, hey, we need to talk. And he said, yeah, we do need to talk. We talked, we got on the phone, and he was trying to figure out a way to merge football villain under the radar. He was asking, can we merge? And I was like, and that I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm I was feeling like, no, nah, bro, listen, I got I was still a correction officer. I got one job. This is my business that I plan on taking to the next level. I don't really want to like, you know what I'm saying, work for anybody. I, we could partner together, but us merging the two, I don't know, which probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but I guess not for that reason at that point in time. So then he hired the two, the two white guys. I forget, I forget their name, but the two very creative, skinny kids that you see running around um 
very innovative, dog. They they brought a, 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 another view to football and how they see it, and um, very creative kids. He hired them too, and it's the same two that makes the videos and the stuff for them now. Um, but his conversation at that moment was, "Listen, bro, I'm just trying to get battle in the arena. If a kid have on battle gloves and Nike shoes, on the armor clothes." I'll just be happy to be in the conversation. Fast forward three years later, right? <laughs> they make this video. Battle is a bigger company blowing up. The kids are starting to wear it. And guess what you think issue he had with this video? Look at that picture. Oh, no, I'm going to watch that Bleasy episode. I love Michael Beasley. <laughs> One of the greatest basketball players I ever saw before. I love Michael Beasley. But what what do you what do you think he had? What issue do you think he had with this picture? When I talk to him about this video, I say, dog, listen, that's one of the greatest football commercials I ever seen in my life. And because I'm from South Florida, I felt it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what was wrong with it. Now we're talking about Chris, the owner of Battle. You know what I'm saying? Now, now it's that was like three years, four years later. Battle is blowing up now. They're not just giving out gloves, they're making clothes. They're, they're doing really good with the marketing. Kids are starting to wear it. Georgia take off with Um, and I'm telling him how great this video was. And he says back to me, Yeah, yeah, D, but it got too much Adidas. <laughs> He said he got too much Adidas in the video. Put the artist. Which Kara City was an Adidas school. Um, right, right, right. Which Kara City was an Adidas school. And I said, Chris, you know what's crazy about this conversation? I remember talking to you years ago and you saying you just wanted battle in the conversation. Now you're like, uh, Adidas, get them out of my video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was funny to me. Now you're like, get Adidas out my video. I no longer want to be in the conversation. I want to be the conversation. Um, and I thought that was that was that was funny, and 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 I and I and it was growth. You know what I'm saying? I, I realized it was growth and 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 reaching goals and, and going to higher goals. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, it it was it it was gross, but that was a fun that was funny that was a funny story to me. Um, if y'all just getting in here, man. Um, I just read the story on why I posted this. Basically, to say Jarvis Brownlee left Miami, ready to go. Jarvis Brownlee came in to this Instagram 48 minutes ago and put the shh, the shh. Uh, I'm going to holler at him, uh, see what he got going on. Um. So yeah, breaking news. I mean, you, we might just broke some news or something. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how they do the little cheesy stuff, but it sounds like breaking news to me. It sounds like we close to breaking news or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah, Hippolyte has awesome energy. Um, you were, you you almost recruiting Brownlee. Um, from what I remember, but Brownlee was man, Brownlee was a lockdown cornerback in high school, bro. <laughs> the real the real deal. 
the, 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 okay, Battle came here to make a video basically of him in Kara City. You see who you see who jumps off the bus first. It's it's Brownie. That was the first time we had ever saw the little book bag with the wings on it. That's it. That's it. I think you know what I'm saying. I don't think it's always the school, but I think I, certain kids, man, like they leave here, they leave here ready to go, and. Man, I remember talking to Stanford Samuels from Florida State when he was de declaring to go to the NFL. And I was like, man, you finna go to the league? And he was like, bro, I got to get out of there. I got to get out of there. Basically, I, before I forget everything that I my dad taught me. You know his daddy is Stanford Samuels Sr. You know what I'm saying? The one who hit Roscoe Parish um, at Florida State. Do I know why he decommitted from UM? I used to know that story. You saying he decommitted from UM? I used to know that story. Um, but kids going off to school, and, and and I just think sometimes, man, you see how Florida State has been underachieving in the in, um, recently. Like, yeah, the kids get caught up in the wash, man. We saw Stanford Samuels get bombed by Wiggins. I was on the sideline at Florida State. We saw it. And Stanford Samuels looks, you know what I'm saying, looks at the cornerback like it was a miscommunication or something of that, of, of that nature. Is your boy Kane still in here? Is your boy Kane still in here? Um, Type something in the comment section. We could make him do a 360. Right, right, right. Listen, bro. Listen. Listen, bro. Stanford Samuel's dad, um, him and 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 another guy used to train kids at U school. It was one of the best DB camps we had that would go Sunday mornings, right? Right. They were training DBs across South Florida. They always going. I forget what it was called. They always going there. Stanford Samuels is his dad. You don't think he taught his son how to play DB? Now let me let me preach it to you again. Sam Bruce, uh, I could just name Elijah. Moore, I could just name. They were all used to all go to this DB camp um, on Sunday mornings, get some work in. Uh, they used to teach. The, Stanford Samuels and dang, I'm, I, I'm, it's, I'm forgetting the other guy name, man. That's messed up. All the kids used to go there. Stanford Samuels is his son. He had him his whole life. You don't think he taught him how to play DB? He was like 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, because his dad played for Florida State. That's why they didn't get him. <laughs> he was like 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, Gets to Florida State and looks like he can't play DB. I know sometimes it's on the kids, dog. Sometimes it's on the kids, but sometimes I just don't think the schools, when they hire the wrong coaching staff, turmoil in the coaching staff. Um, not the Santi Samuel, Stanford Samuel. <laughs> You know, me, JR, say if you're good enough, you you overcome college versus high school to different things. Um, I got my thing on that is this. You're right. There are players that there are, there are players that are so good, Denzel Perryman, Duke Johnson, that it doesn't matter what they who they coach are. But all NFL players aren't that. You know what I'm saying? All, all of them aren't that. There are some players that are so good that it's it. It don't matter that Don Fario is your coach. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You're that good. You're, you're, you're that good, and you overcome. Duke Johnson overcome um, overcome everything. What's going on? Chilling, bro. You can hear me? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we can hear you, man. What's good? I'm good, man. I'm at the crib, dog. I seen you on here, man, putting your show on. So I say, man, I say, hey, yo, I want to battle, cuz. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> What's good, man? Dude came in and said he got my daughter in his class, man. I had a moment this morning, dog. I, I saw that, dog. I saw that, dog. Yeah, you were lost for words for a minute, but I feel you, dog. That's what it's all about, man. You know what I mean? I know we've had talk yeah. about that, man, that, and those battles with the kids and so forth, man. But, uh, you know, everything will come out, man, in, in, on the top. And I know you always say, you know, tell my kid I love them, but they know that, man. They know that regardless of what's being told to them. They know that. Appreciate that, bro. Bro, you think, you think, my argument is always, listen, man, when I saw Kiri, when I saw Brownlee play, he could play. Florida State messed that up. Stamp. It, it, does that happen more often than I think, dog, or, or I'm just um, a Miami homer <laughs> on these kids? I thought Stanford mm -hmm. Samuels could play DB, right? With the mm -hmm. Florida State. Brownlee, who's at Florida State now, um, he could play when he left here. All they had to do was make him better. Do sometimes colleges don't make kids better? You coach college football as well. Definitely, man. I actually coached uh, Boosie and well, I was on that Flanagan team with, with them, man. Right. Um, oh, okay, yeah. well, this is a perfect guy to have on you there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I was. Yeah, I was on that that team with Bush and and Boosie. Well, Stanford Samuel's daddy, call him Boosie, right. but mm -hmm. but um, yeah, he could play, man. I mean, that dude played quarterback for us, DB, wide receiver. He played everything, and then like you say, when you go to college and it doesn't, there's a disconnect when it doesn't trend. Like when when the kids can't turn on. But it, it, it's two parts of that, right? Sometimes uh -huh. high school is easy for the kids, and sometimes, and I'm not saying this in Boosie's case, right? I'm just calling Stanford Center with Boosie as well, but that's not maybe not his case. But just you asked me a question about kids, right? Sometimes, dog, it's easy in high school and college, it ain't easy, dog, and they fall out of love with it. they fall out of love with the game, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it could be it could be twofold, but for the most part, there's sometimes coaches that jack kids up. And then, like, I remember you talking about the state. Was it Stacy Coley interview? Mm -hmm. No, Tracy Howard. Tracy Howard interview you did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where well, this dude could play. He got him playing cuz, man. Let that man lock up. That's what he did when he was at Miramar. Right. You know, so sometimes schematically things can hurt kids. You know what I mean? That's like having Deion Sanders playing. Tell me, all you going to play is cover three. Man, shoot. Right. Right. I don't yeah. If a kid goes to college, right, and it's so tough <laughs> that he don't he don't love playing anymore, is something wrong with the system? Nah, dog. I'm gonna tell you this, man. It's a mm -hmm. lot of it's a lot of kids that's scared of success. Believe that or not, bro. I know that's gonna that's hard for me to say. Like it's some all day kids, all Broward, all wherever city they from, and they go to college, dog. They don't want that six a.m. workout. See, it it was so easy for them. And they didn't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to get up at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, work out. Like, that's what takes away from their success. Not to actually, like, they love to play. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, they were successful without doing all that crap. So now, you know what I mean? Think about it. For them, in high school, football practice was football practice. At 2.30 to 5.30 or whatever, and they go home. Right. You know? Now it's so structured. You come in in the morning, six o'clock, you got to eat breakfast. Then do this. Make a lot of teams practice in the morning. So you practice. Then you do that after school. Then you got to go to study hall. Then after you go to study hall, you go meet with a tutor. Then after that, you got, I mean, it's so, it's so calculated. Your day is so structured and a lot mm -hmm. of kids don't want that. I believe that. I, I believe, I believe that. I, I believe that. Um, or don't know how to deal with it or don't understand that. Man, I know how to play football. Why I got to? It's been easy to this point. I, I, I believe that. Yeah, it's a lot of kids that fall in that category, dog. They want their freedom, but they want to play the ball at the same time. Mm hmm What's going on with you, man? man I'm chilling, man. I'm down here at the crib, like I said, trying to handle some business, man. Take care of stuff. I know I ain't even putting out the people like, what are the WRE videos? But, you know, I got to take time to get those 23 class in. I'm just trying to let them build up a little bit, man. I learned. You know, these kids, you know, they don't know what they're doing right now. They commit, decommit, going on visits. So I kind of let that chill for a little bit, and then we're going to come back strong here after our spring break. Because Dade County not on spring break right now, are they? No. Okay. Only Broward. Oh, Broward on spring break. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. So when did Dade yeah. go? Next week? Uh, 
Next week? Yeah, I think they next week. Gotcha. Cal said, Tracy, Tracy said from what I took was more about the culture. Like Tracy was saying, Tracy Howard was saying it was the first time like a, a white man coached him and didn't I've know said how that. to. Yeah, yeah, we've talked about that before. And he didn't know how to take, like it wasn't the same bond, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's coming from a different, different, and, and I know a lot of y'all may not understand this, but it's coming from a different person, a different color. And it's like, I was raising, you ain't even talking to me like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that's an issue that doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, well, I know we've talked about it. I've definitely talked about it on my show. The majority of our kids, I would probably say 95% of the kids who come out of Dade County. I can't really speak for Broward because I don't know their makeup, but I know definitely in Dade County it has never had a white coach since they've been playing football. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a Cuban, I'm not talking about a Spanish dude, Cuban right. cat. I'm talking about a white coach. So it's a culture shock for a lot of them, right? You know, um and their way of getting, like I said, I've been in those meetings where those dudes could have made teachable moments. I'm not gonna rehash all that, but mm -hmm. I've seen them get on them and they're sometimes white coaches think I gotta yell at a kid for him to understand, but it's not about the yelling, it's how you yell at a kid too sometimes. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, their terminology sometimes is different, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just saying, like that, you know, their form of cursing at a kid is different than if uh, <laughs> they got a different set of curse words. It, no, it's a different. It's a different uh, way in which they put it. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it isn't, bro. Okay, like for example, um. Like fucker, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be a fucker. Don't be a, like you know that kind of you 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 know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm saying when I say that. Meaning, it's just the way in which because they haven't again they've never heard that type of deal before, right? And then on the, on the flip side, on the flip side, I'm only assuming, right? Uh, or or slap dick. You always hear, you know that coach Jason Brown. You know Jason Brown, the coach, the, the, the JUCO coach. He always call people slap. That's yeah. not too many black coaches not using that type of terminology and that that I've known. You know, and don't be a slap dick. And black dude, like who are you talking to? Like you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Though, if that makes sense. Merrick made uh Merrick McGray said, but what about Mark Stoop was a DB coach at UM? He coached Sean Taylor and Antrell Rowe. I just put that up there. That's not a conversation we have. <laughs> I just put that up there because sometimes people take things, bits and pieces of things, and they make it. Yeah, we're not saying that they can't coach the kids. We're saying it's no, a culture I, shock for the kids. Right. So, exactly. But then look at the kids you're talking about. Sean Taylor, who went to Gulliver Prep, mm -hmm. and Andrew Roll, who, I mean, you have to think about what you're talking about. And, and I'm saying <laughs> this to Batman. He coached them. <laughs> Huh? Radio could have coached them. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. But that also doesn't mean that they ain't get into it a couple of times, right? Just because you coached them. Right. Um, you know, for example, here, here's a prime example. I'm going to leave them nameless, but a good coach buddy of mine was coaching at a smaller school, and he was saying that he was an offensive line coach, and he was saying that not one recruit that came in for the offensive line at this school was a black young man. And I was like, well, why is that? Why is that, man? He said because he felt like that coach could not relate to those kids and he couldn't understand it. So it was easier to deal with 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 just the white players, right? And that happens a lot, right? Because you can't relate to a, a kid. And one thing about kids in general, they know when you real or fake. You know what I mean? I seen a, I seen a coach going there. He carried a, 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 some Jordans in the back of his trunk. Every time he went into the black school, he put his Jordans on because that was the icebreaker. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the trick. There. So he'd go into Northwestern, and he'd have on the, the, the retro fours when he go in there. But if he, go to, but if he went into, uh, like you say, Gulliver Prep or, or whatever the case yeah. may be, he'd have a loafers on. 
you know, and them kids know when you real and fake it. Like that's to me, that's that's gimmicky, but that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's called recruiting, ain't it? Yeah, it's called recruiting. But what I'm saying is, is it authentic recruiting? What I'm trying to say is, you feel like you got to put some shoes on to talk to a kid. That ain't recruiting to me. Like that's just you trying to say I can fit in with you guys. And to me, that if you're not that guy, then don't be that guy. If you are that guy, and one thing we like is authenticity. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think you I think it's, it's an icebreaker. Like I think it's what you called it. No, it was an icebreaker. But what I'm saying is that goes to show that you don't have. I just can't carry a conversation. Like I gotta come in here with. And now, if you're a dude that wore fours, then wear your fours. You gotta go to recruiting school. What you mean? Like in the military, when they become recruiters, they mm-hmm. actually get sent to recruiting school and taught how to recruit. Oh no, nah, man! Most of it just relationships and having conversations, man. Well, there's That's your answer right there. Exactly. Yep, <laughs> that's your answer right there. You take yeah, you take a coach from Green Bay and you send him to Booker T. He can't talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. He, yeah, he would have to develop that skill set somewhere. Right. And if you look at a lot of coaches, uh, I guess you're not actually in the schools, but mm-hmm. a lot of coaches, and this is not 100%, so I don't want the fan base to kill me, but a lot of teams are sending a lot of their black coaches to Miami in those particular schools, like the Northwestern, the Booker T, the Central, mm-hmm. the Carroll C, the New Orleans. Because they are relatable, not only to the kids, but to the coaches, right? That's how they look at it. Now, that's smart on their behalf because when I was at FIU uh, under Ron Turner, those guys, the guy that was over recruiting came from Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he just put coaches in there. And when I looked at the recruiting map, I was like, I like, yo, B, check this out, man. So we went in there and had to make some changes. We had to put some of the Dolphy Hugh brothers in those schools and put some of the light at you, brother, before park, you know, into your right. right, right, right. So and I don't you, now we had some 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 lighter brothers walk in them schools, but I knew they could handle it. You know what I mean? Like a Stephen Fields, right? He could walk into the West. He could walk into the Central and have a conversation. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But but that was that. Right. I, yeah, I don't what's Stephen Fields from? North Florida somewhere? No, nah, West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I mean, I I just I just think that's what they just have to do, right? Or you think you just seen the best guy? No, not initially. I, I've seen it, bro. They send guys. It's usually a lot of it's usually a lot of black coaches that come in there. Like I said, that start the initial. Then once the conversation is going, going good and the relationships have been built, then they'll send in the coordinators and so forth. Um, and that's just what it is. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. But, and again, that's 100%. That's not all schools. I'm not saying white coaches can't come to Miami and recruit guys. I'm not saying that at all. We're just talking about smart, tactical business. Uh-huh. Is what it is, right? Same reason why they don't have ugly girls selling cars. <laughs> I mean, it's smart tactical business, right? No, it it is. It it is. Speaking of girls, it's funny you brought that up. I was talking to somebody that's got recruited by the 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 big the the big schools. You know what I'm saying? Just went through the process. They said, "D, you know these big schools have like 20, 30 women on their recruiting staff." Yeah. And he said, "Like the women call you, hey Hayes, what's going on? How that dog doing? I want puppies if you." And and it's more of an inviting thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he was saying that that wasn't the process at Miami. Um, yet, at least yet, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know that women had that big of a part in recruiting, dog. We all saw the program, right? And and that's what he say. You go there, they assign you, they assign you a goddess, and she makes sure you have drinks. She makes sure you have like she, she's like, hey, you hot, you okay? I got a fan. The whole through the whole process, right? See what you threw the games and everything. Listen, they had a Tennessee. They got what I think they call them the Orange Crush or something like that. Let me look um, it up. Yeah, I think uh-huh. they call them Orange. They were Orange jackets and stuff. Um, 
and no, here's the thing: like if you come during the season and you as a and they they're your hostess basically, and right. they take you around, they go everywhere you go, they drive a golf cart with you and the coach on it, and they take you to, um, uh-huh. to the different buildings. I was trying to think, and so that time we went to a game. Matter of fact, Tennessee was playing Alabama, and she sat right there next to us the whole trip. I'm talking about from the time we stepped on campus to the time we left. And we was there from probably about 10 o'clock that morning to that game. was It was a night game. And that game was over probably 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night. And she was there the whole time. And she just, she just being nice, just helping you out. She your hostess. She hosts. And it's a bunch of them. They call them the Orange. I think in Tennessee, they call them the Orange Crush. They Everybody the got orange, The Orange Pride, they say. Oh, they may have changed the name then because I think they had gotten a little bit of trouble. Oh, yeah. That's the Orange Pride. I see them. <laughs> they, got jackets on, right? uh-huh. they got orange jackets on yeah uh-huh like orange orange long sleeve whatever you call these shirts or whatever yeah they used to wear like a blazer like an orange blazer but uh anyway i mean yeah the, all schools have been doing that even when we was at fiu we didn't have the uh yeah georgia got them too listen we went to georgia matter of fact Slim called me to give me directions on how to get on the campus. That's what I'm saying. See, and that's what the conversation was about. It was about yeah. like, yeah, man, when I got my letter of intent to sign, you know what I'm saying? It was a woman that called me. When I had to talk to uh, Kirby Smart, a woman called me. Like, hey, Coach, Coach Hayes, what's going on? You know, you got to meet with Kirby Smart today. You free? Yeah, okay, all right. I want to see you guys again. We had a good time. Y'all was here. I'm going to pass you into Kirby Smart. And he was just saying that that Miami wasn't at that point yet. You, 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 um, it's a hardback call. You like, hey, what's going on, boy? Uh, we about to shoot this. <laughs> we about to shoot this. We about to shoot this old to you, dog. Um, Matter of fact, Florida got one. Florida got a young lady. A lot of these ladies, if you look on their roster, they it's a lot of them are women. Who are on? They're over the uh, on-campus recruiting, right? So you may have like Roland Smith may be director of recruiting. So under him is going to be a young lady who's responsible for on-campus recruiting, meaning she's going to take them around. You know what I mean? Because they can answer mama questions, they can do all that kind of stuff. But it's two ladies that's real heavy on uh, Twitter, man, from Florida. It's two two young ladies uh, that are I, over. There. I, I I've heard them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've heard them. I've, I've definitely heard them, mm-hmm. and they're, they're over that. But yeah, on campus recruiting, right? So they're not the ones who's going to find the player, right? Like, so Roland Smith, you know, going to hear about you know uh, Daryl Streeter from Miami Noel, and he going to make that initial. But once he makes that initial call, he'll turn that over to her. Then she'll put her girls on it. It's like Hall of Knights. Hey, you got a girl, man? I got a girl so good. And before you know it, now I'm not saying that's what happened. I just use that as an example. But sometimes it do go down. You know what I mean? They of age. Those girls are of age. Um, right, that's my next question. I was going to ask you. Like she spent the whole day with y'all, right? Mm-hmm. What was the vibe? Did you feel like you could ask her anything? Yeah. Now they gonna be political because for me, here's the difference. Remember, I'm a grown man. They still they college kids, but they don't want to be disrespectful, right? So they they. Now, they'll talk to them players, and I don't know what they say because I gave them a little space. I, maybe he was shooting his shot. I don't know. Um, but Should you give him his space? See, see that was going to be what I was going to go into. When That's I right. say it's meaning like I'm not standing right next to him. I may be 20 feet over here where they can have a conversation. Right. Because we men, and it's like, yeah, boy, do your thing. But we know how smart women are. And mm-hmm. once again, we start talking about kids in the recruiting. Right, mm-hmm. let him make his own decisions. Boy it's, <laughs> boy, it's a jungle out there. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I, I had a uh, I actually learned this from Coach Dunn too, but I have a I had a policy, and I used to tell the coaches that like if kids happen to go on a trip or something, or went on one of them seven seven camps, and I wasn't with them, my players knew, their parents knew, and the coaches they were going to see knew that no kid that I have can commit on the spot. I mean, can uh. Uh, commit on the spot with uh-huh. them uh, simply because it's too much pressure for a 17-year-old kid, right? You right. know, 
it's feeling good, it looked good. No, nah, now if his mom or his family is on that trip with them and they decide to commit, then that's on them. But a, a 17 year old kid is not going to be by himself without an adult with him uh, and, and making that decision with his family. Now, if your mom go on that trip or your dad go on that trip and y'all decide y'all like it enough and y'all gonna commit, well, that's that's on y'all. But my thing was, uh, you're not gonna commit unless your family's involved. Right. 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 Shout out to the Bullyville man with the 1999. Shout out to Bullyville. Yours, yours. You're a very smart man. Very smart man. Very, very, very smart man. Every time you do it, I totally respect. I respect the savviness. Whatever. Um. But no, bro, I, I just – because when you look at the – you never see him on a coaching roster or anything like that. Um, you see that one lady, though. That that one – if you look at her roster, I guarantee that lady up there. The one. The one? The head. The head person or whoever it is that's over, like, director on, on campus recruiting or something like that. She uh -huh. probably on – I guarantee it. Yeah. But I, I guess, man, I guess you, you, you got the resources to do things like that. I mean, I guess eventually – I guess we get there, but we – we got a big bag down here now. Oh, it's a big old bag down here. <laughs> so I, I guess we'll get there and everything that needs to be done gets done. You satisfied with the coaching staff? Yeah, very much so, man. Like I said uh, before, you know, the the, the, <laughs> the 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 fan base, not the fan base, I guess. I want to say people in the comments, you know, they were ripping my behind about what I said about Mario, and I still stand by that because I think it's still factual. And I, I think you brought it up with Luke yeah. uh, about, and I've always said in order for him to be successful and Luke said, he's got to surround himself with good guys and he has to strike gold. Um, and he struck gold. Here's the deal, right? Loving it now, but they already talking about Josh Gaddis being a head coach next year after this season, right? It's already on ESPN and all that being the next, top guy coming out getting a head coach. So now Cristobal has to do what? Strike goal again and strike goal. That's all I'm just trying to say. That was, but, that was yeah. my only concern about him. But Luke, to, said, Luke said it was, Luke said the opposite though. He said it was a good thing. I saw he that. He said it was I, a good thing. Well, here's the deal. You and T said the lighter. You know what I'm saying? Y'all said the opposite of what Luke said. Um, yeah. But the difference is like when Luke said it, he said it's going to be hard for me to give up my defense. Right? Yeah. He was talking about that. So I don't know. I can't say it is a good or, or it isn't. What I know is I don't know if it's a longevity thing because it's almost like playing roulette. You know what I mean? You could bet on black, but it's eventually it's going to hit red eventually, right? It just happens. That's that's football. That That's 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 probability. Um, and, again, I always go back to coaches like who? Ed Ogeron, right? Great recruiter, fired up, loved his school. He struck gold, and after that, he kind of crapped the bed. Even Dabo Sweeney is going through it right now. Look right. at Dabo. He lost his de the defense. He was lucky because the defensive coordinator didn't want to be head coach. Then he saw the sink, the ship going down a little bit. like, I'm out. And so now, this is definitely time for you and to strike against Clemson this year, man, because they, they they hurting a little bit. Um, I know. They just came out with some allegations on them, too, like some, some violations. <laughs> That's what they did, dog. You know minor why? ones, I think minor ones. Yeah, but you know why? Because they're not on top anymore. It's like anything else. Once you're not on top, like the, they're gonna get you. Look at all them track guys. It's a dirty they game, got dogs. It's a dirty game. Long as you making the NCAA money, they ain't gonna bother you. As soon as you stop doing that, now we got to do everything because you've already made us the money. Go look at Marion Jones, the track star. She did all that stuff. Then they put it in jail. Dog, no, Usain Bolt did the smartest thing. People can say what they want to say. Bro, he got out on top. He ain't stay in too long because, man, look here. You can't tell me this man ain't doing Got to do something, bro. You don't break a world record looking sideways running like this. <laughs> bro, you broke the world record. I don't care if he's 6'6 six, six or not, bro. You broke the world record. Looking back at the man laughing. <laughs> Read that comment. It ain't Sunday, man. Read the comment. Yes, Judah. My nephew committed the fam you because he got hit on the fish. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't Sunday, man. Chill out, man. Read it the happened. comment. No, but it, ha it happens all the time. It, I'm telling you. So I, that's why I said the coaches already know he can't commit. Like, and they know they not they not going they're not going to allow him to commit like that because they don't want to mess up the pipeline. 
You know what I mean? So yeah, <laughs> that's funny, dog. <laughs> then we went to fam. What was the boy other options? Like what was? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, imagine if he would have went to his other visits. Imagine what it was. What it was. <laughs> Listen, man, it can't be that prevalent, though, because these kids will be, they, they, they'll be going to all these, all these uh, official visits. They decline official visits all the time. Man, let me tell you something, bro. Anyway. All right. Let me <laughs> tell you something. And it may not be it, it. It may not be those young ladies that's a part that's affiliated with the program. But you got to remember when these kids go on visits, they got a host. Who is their host? One of these players. And what do they normally do? Go out that night, that Friday night, or when they come in or whatever. That Saturday after the game. And and them boys got a team, right? And them boys saying, "Hey, look, they they got some people that's willing to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. And they like, look, hey, we need to get this dude right here for the team." And they literally take one for the team. Right. Hmm. I've been around for a long time, but. You say you've been around. Somebody put in here, man. Why Coach Hayes don't coach no more? Um, COVID, bro. Like, two or well, a couple of things. I'm glad he asked that. Or she or whoever asked. I was coaching, man. And, um, what I start realizing when I, to use one of your words, what I realized, what I started realizing was a lot of kids don't have a love for it, right? Um, a lot of administration, I talk about this all the time, they don't care. And like Luke, and I was listening to Luke interview, he could be doing a thousand different things in the world, but he wake up every day to do this for these shorties. Mm -hmm. What stopped me from coaching was literally COVID. I had to sit down and I started doing them WREs. And that's how that's really how I stopped coaching. And I just kind of look at this as part two of my career. You know what I mean? Like, um, because I, I got done with high school coaching. You know what I mean? It wasn't fun anymore. And I love Friday nights. I love practice. I love the football. It was the 90% of the other crap you got to deal with, you know, administration, right? Uh, that don't care. The stuff they're going through right now with the dog on zoning. You know what I mean? Like you putting all this up with y'all, y'all paying us peanuts and you screwing us over. Like that's the stuff that, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's hard, it's hard, dog, to get three thousand dollars a year. Y'all taxing that. And then gonna talk about then, you know, nah, dog. It, it got to a point where I had to start taking care of, of Coach Hayes. Nah, no, at least you saw that, man. A lot of dudes don't see it. Their passions just keep driving them, you know what I'm saying? Um, and if it wasn't for COVID, I would have been the same way. I mean, I, I believe that to this day. If it, COVID didn't sit me down, I did this. I believe in my heart of hearts, I've still been out here coaching. That's the guys on the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because, or I wouldn't have been doing like YouTube or something. I would have tried to do maybe something else. But I, I, what I like about this is I'm still in coaching, but I'm not. Like, I'm coaching people, I guess. It's more you know? impactful. Yeah, it's hard, man. Cause I, but I love the game plan. I love the X and O's. I love. I always just say this. I love making two D become three D. Meaning putting some on paper, X and O's on paper, and then you watch. You can get eleven minds to think the same way. Like I used to love that part of it, man. You know, I really did. I enjoy interacting with the shorties and the players and all. But like you said, I sacrificed a lot for this game. Houses, relationship, hell, you know, kids. You know what I'm saying? Like. A lot for this game, you know, and I just believe God put me in this situation to do it for 20 years so I could do this and then take 20 years of experience to bring my own little my own little corner of this YouTube world. Yeah. Yeah. From a coach's perspective, I don't think anybody else kind of really doing it like that. I never wanted to. Um, <clears throat> I never wanted to coach, but I wanted mm -hmm. to because I always started with put me in the corner. Like I always thought that I wanted to impact kids. But I always thought that if I put on purple for the Ravens, now I can't impact Washington Park. Or I always thought it put you in the corner. You impacted those kids in your corner. And I thought Footballville was a broader way to impact kids. Um, that's how you I kind of, yeah, that's how I kind of looked at it. Um, when you make a game plan, right, and you go on the field, does it play out? Like I had a mentor that always told me, man, listen, bro. 
anything you need invent, any plan you come up with, it's never going to play out the way you planned it to play out. Does it play out on the field the way it play out in the chop room? If the team sucks, yes. If the team is good, no. <laughs> so if you playing, if you playing a garbage team, if you playing a bunch of poor little Timmies, man, your job looks flawless, bro. You know, and here's the thing about it. Even if it's not, the actual plan is not flawless, your players are so much better than them, it still looks good. But when you go to those matchups, as Josh Gaddis say, when we got to the playoffs, it <laughs> got real. It looked different. Hear what he said? It looked different. And we got the lead play. Things start to look different. We had guys. <laughs> they had guys, guys. <laughs> because in the game plan, you don't ex- you don't expect your receiver not to get off the line of scrimmage. You know what I'm saying? Like when you draw on the board, you don't be like, okay, he go to game plan. We're gonna draw the squiggly line right here because he's stuck right here for the longest, and eventually he's gonna get up and run around. No, I don't work like that, you know, um, and that's the thing. All parts have to move well. That's why I love the game of football, right, that all moving parts have to work the same like an engine uh, in order to be kind of successful in this game. But then you look at, like, Bobby Bowden when he talked about Peter Ward. You know, he, remember that, I don't know if you remember that speech he made where, yeah, Peter, I coached you. Anyway. Remember, it's going to be a guy coming from this side. You're going to fall down, put your hand down so you stay up. And you guys gonna, that's just Peter Ward making a play. That's not, There's no coaching for that. Um, so anyway, uh, no, it doesn't. To answer your question, no, it doesn't. But that's where coaching comes in. And I always talk about the what ifs. You got to be able to teach the what ifs. As long as you got the foundation, you're good. Now you got to teach the what ifs. Because on the board, you may say, hey, they're going to line up in cover two. Well, what happens if they line up eight yards off the ball and they give you a cover three look? What do you do? What if they line up in the cover three look? How does that change the play? What if they line up in a press look? How does that? That's coaching. You know what I'm saying? Yesterday, I was we was talking about James, and I was saying how proud I was of him, listening to him talk. And it's like, man, how did, yeah, how did he? You know what I'm saying? How did they get him to become that mature? Even he speaks better, like he he can he can talk better, his words, and it could be environment, it could be a bigger staff. Maybe they they keep talking about mental stuff, so maybe they're doing some more mental things. Um, and John Drummond, you know John Drummond. Yeah, I coach with him at Jackson. Drummond said, yeah, man, James, dog, James looks awesome, man. He said, when Miami get to the point where all their players look like James, I said, Drummond, because Drummond flies, he travels around with the kids in the school a lot. And I said, dog, you trying to tell me at these, these higher level schools, all the kids look like James? He said, hell yeah. <laughs> now, now, I'm saying that to say this point. Okay. Was Gaddy saying that walking to that Georgia game, they're going to beat us eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten, regardless. Or Harbaugh could come up with a scheme. It's not like the game was just out of reach. You know what I'm saying? Harbaugh could, you can come up with a scheme, and you could walk into that game less man, but scheme them out of a game. Or whatever you come up works that day. All right, so to answer your question, do me, do me a favor. Mm-hmm. I'm going to answer your question, but I need you to pull. I can't do it. If you can pull up the coin toss between Georgia and Michigan, that's okay. going to answer your question. Why are you doing that? Okay. I'm going to answer your question. So, yes, what 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 uh, Drummond was saying at these major programs, Georgia, Alabama, even Clemson at the time, uh, Ohio State, they these are all Goliaths. You understand? And when I say Goliaths, they all huge. They they are the biggest and the best at their position. See, James is our one Goliath at our position. When you go to Georgia, they all look like James, even the backup dudes. <laughs> think about it. The running back for Alabama. Think about it. The running back for Alabama sat on the bench for three years. Who was in front of him? Najee Harris was the number one running back coming out of California, sat on right. the bench. Right. I mean, if you look at their running backs, they ain't got no – dog, they don't have no rinky-dink dudes. Since Mark Ingram era, you had Derrick Henry. You had uh, uh, Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy. You know what I mean? I mean, these big-time dudes, these ain't no little cat. They, none of them dudes look like Jalen Knight, dog. None of them. Right. And that's not to knock Jalen Knight, but none of them are built like Jalen Knight. 
Right. They built yeah. like they built like Cheney or bigger. <laughs> no, it's sho- it, it, yeah, it was kind of shocking to me when he said they all. <laughs> he said they all. all <laughs> and then here's the thing, just to show you, when you look at Georgia, as big as those guys are, they put on a track meet in the 40 yard dash, dog. Track look how- meet. So they're big human beings and they're running like little human beings. They are right. getting the biggest and the best players. And the reason I brought that up about that, I don't know if you can just point out that that you it could be a still picture of it. They so so did you answer the question about scheming? Yeah, so so here's the thing about scheming. Yeah, you can get away with it, but here's the difference. When Goliath got a the same or nice, let's have a great playoff game. <laughs> To be one of the top defensive ends coming out in the oh, country. I see what you're saying. Even look at the thickness. Like, look at the yeah. Look at the mm-hmm. the size all around. Like, right. That's what IMG have over Dade County kids. And in the fourth quarter, you can no longer tackle them anymore because of the thickness, because- the, the, the the eating, the, the 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 extra ten pounds that they have in all your kids. You know what I'm saying? But they're getting the best of the best. Now I'm gonna tell you something. Now I may go off a limb right here. If Dade County could get the best of Dade County and make one team, we'll whip IMG every day. If the IMG, if IMG went and got all their players from all over the country, <laughs> if we went and got all of the defensive players, I mean, all of the players just out of Dade and say Dade and Broward County, if we had a team with just those players, I think we'll whip them. You think you, you so you think so? You want to know why I say that? Mm-hmm. Because they still may be bigger, mm-hmm. but I think our dog is deeper, dog. And I know I might be biased, but I am, I'm I'm from the crib, so I'm gonna be biased. That, for example, we may have a two-two at will type body type, but he a dog. Right. They have a dude that's six three. He look he look like Goliath, but he ain't got right. that dog. Right. These right here, they got dog and the side. I'm looking at dog. Look at their body types, bro. You said they got dog anywhere. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the game. Think about it. Dude like Jordan Davis right there, 99, bigger than everybody on there, and ran a 4-7, 4-8. 4-7, 4-8, dog. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. They say he wasn't even like um, like coming out of high school. <clears throat> I'm thinking he had to be five-star, number one player in the nation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. IMG it's, it's their resources you know what I'm saying um, they would be bigger than our kids but I understand what you're saying American Heritage played them close enough this year American Heritage actually beat them before um, but imagine, imagine if you had American Heritage they top players St. Thomas top uh-huh. players Central <laughs> players Carol City top players Book right. T's top players <laughs> Right. It might be deeper. This was IMG versus Miami Central when Miami Central had them on the ropes in the fourth quarter, dog. Yeah. And and this is how it went. Before the game started, we driving out there, and the principal called me. Man, I think we got a shot tonight. What's the, what the principal name is? Who just left? Bethune. Greg Bethune. Bethune. Yeah, Bethune calls me, man. I think we got a shot tonight, man. Uh, this one, they had James Cook and all those guys, and I said, I said, listen, bro, I don't know how y'all going to do it, but y'all got to conserve y'all energy and make it to the fourth quarter. I say, because every game I've covered this year, Trey Saunders <laughs> breaks a long run in the fourth quarter because you can no longer tackle him because you're exhausted. They was up on IMG in the fourth quarter, and Trey Sanders broke up the middle 70 yards and I'm thinking they gonna catch him. <laughs> like they gotta catch him. He's Trey Sanders. He's 230 pounds. Couldn't right. Catch pause him. right there. Pause it right there. Go Could back to the to the type. Look at those body types again. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing you're talking about. Same thing. Yeah. So here's my, so here's my thing, right? I remember when I was at Jackson, we played a popka. We came up here and played a popka. At that time, at Jackson, we only had 35 players. We take the opening, DeAndre Jasper, I think, take the opening kickoff back to the house. Bro, I'm talking about we put it on him. And this was the first time a Popka ever wore 
black jerseys. You know, they blue and white. Right. And we jump out on them. And the popcorn think they were slick. They know we hood our kids from the from the crib. Uh huh. You know, they, they feed us. Man, they go give our kids a whole chicken. Not a Cornish hen. I go hey, you know what a Cornish hen is. <laughs> a full chicken dog. And he gave it gave they gave each kid a whole chicken. Man, we in that time to stop them from eating all that. They like they tan it up. How you gonna play a game in two hours with a whole chicken in your stomach? <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, we got we jump out on them. But to your point, it was so deep. Like I'm talking about, I remember Lack went in there and thumped my man. Uh, he went to Tennessee, number seven. Um, uh, Tom uh, Smith thumped my man. Bye, right? Laid him down. He laid him down. Laid him down on the thing. Right. And then after he laid him down. You know, what you call it? They call in another cat and another cat. And we just got worn down. So, yeah, to your point, it makes sense. Yeah, this is Brendy Ratley Howe. Brendy Ratley Howe is transferred to Washington from Oklahoma. He went to Oklahoma. He was one of the top cornerbacks in the nation. He a little dude. Fire. I know him. I know him, yeah. Even his body. Look at his body. He's probably one of the shorter kids on the, t- on the field. Um, But look at his body. Yeah. But no, it's not. It's not. It's not even close. But listen, our kids walk up there, bro, and they it's, they don't flinch. But <laughs> you're still human, dog, and your body went down. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Imagine, but imagine if our backup is just as good as our starter. That's what that's what IMG has. Right. See, most times in Dade County, your starters are here, and it's a huge drop off for your second team. Like when you put all the second twenty two out now. It's a huge drop off. Yeah. But, but imagine if you could take all of imagine you got a Dallas Turner. You got all these people don't want the same team. Then you mess around and have, you know, all these players back to back to back and you rotate and they fresh. Man, uh-huh. we'll run we'll run through IMG, dog. Straight up. We'll run oh. straight we'll run straight through IMG. You say we'll run through them, dog? Yeah, we'll run through them. I think fifty six is what's the name? Um, is it Navon Donaldson? Navon Donaldson? Is it? I don't know. Um, let me see. And they were bigger than him. Yeah. I mean, you just look at kids like, you know, for example, I remember when John Campbell was at Dr. Phillips. And Dr. Phillips had a good team, man. But he looked so much bigger than the rest of their team. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. He looks so much bigger than the rest of that team. Like it was ridiculous. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's this team right here. No, 56 was Torian Stanford, 6'5, 320. So they sent their biggest dude out there. Now, Navon Donaldson was 55, 6'5, 335. There's some big kids though. And look at 24, his jersey just a wrinkly. <laughs> 24. Play. Play. That's what I'm saying. He could, he got he could play. Hey, but, right, right. But if I go get the best of Dade County, he won't he won't even be on that team. Probably. I don't know who 24 is. I'm just talking. 24 is James Cook. <laughs> is it? Remember him being 24, but that's what it say on the uh I don't think so though. That's what it say on the roster. I, I remember got him being I remember him being four. Let me see. Let's see. And if I it is know. hold on, if it is him, Maybe that goes just we're talking about size, bro. Maybe a young, but he he, he balled that game now. He no nah, James Cook right there. He, he was four. I'm about to say, dog. It's a 24, 24 on the roster. He was <laughs> four. They bro. Bro. Everybody stop right there. Look way different than twenty four. <laughs> twenty four. They don't. I don't know who they got twenty four on the roster. They got it wrong. Yeah, that look way different. That <laughs> Cook. James Cook got off that game though, dog. Nah, my, they, they had him. My, I take our top Florida kids over, and we'll take the state of Florida. And they can have the rest of the fifty one states, and make a team, and we'll yeah. whip them. Somebody say IMG don't want to play Matter Day. No, that's not true. Um, IMG, 
This is how the story went. This is how Under the Radar explained it to me. Um, IMG went to play Matter Day. It was the last game they'll ever play in California. The state of California banned them. Under the Radar said, listen, man, they cheated IMG, and that was the last game they could play in California. He said they kicked some of IMG players out the game. Um, but I think they've played Matter Day before. Um, IMG loses games. I mean, uh, every now and then. They got beat this year by, by the team out of Baltimore. Um, somebody did a little Florida State tag on. Boy, I'm gonna pull out that thing thing anyway. Go ahead. That's that's Radley House right there, man. I mean, this man, this, yeah, this man, yes, but I mean, his body, but but I said it because his body couldn't hold up in college, like he wasn't a big enough man, little James, right there. He wasn't a big enough man, uh. He, 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 I saw him take some hard collisions in college, and then he went to Washington. Um, but he was a dog, man. But listen, man, I, we got a, a last segment to run, bro, man. I'm going to holler at you. You, the, you at home right now? You in the crib? Yeah, yeah. Hey, real yeah. quick, yo, I'm doing a show tonight, man. We got a new, par, not the new podcast series I call Coach Me Coach. So we do that tonight at 8 o'clock, man. Y'all check it out. We um, we what talk about is? Dom Smith. He okay. used to be a, a beat writer for the Ohio State Buckeyes, but a very knowledgeable man. We're talking about Big Ten football. Again, it's more than just uh, uh, Miami Hurricane stuff. It's just talking about football all together. So it's called the Coach Me Coach podcast. Check us out every Tuesday uh, night at 8, between 8 to 9. We keep it strictly an hour. We don't do anything more than that, but uh, we're just trying to broaden our horizon, man, and, and, and cover everything, but Streeter, when you finish, dog, hit me up, man. Uh, right after you get off, dog, can you holler at you? I got you, dog. I holler at you, man. All right, y'all. Okay. All right, I'm gonna bring my guy. <clears throat> oh, boy, I've been on here hour forty minutes, but we're going to Halloween whole ho time. Rich, you there? What's going on, Streeter? What's going on, man? We said we was gonna talk to y'all every day um, about NFTs and. On the 18th of March, we dropping NFTs and how you guys get an NFT. Shout out to everybody who's jumping in IOD squad because <laughs> they want to be first to get an NFT. Um, that's two, twenty. It's only twenty dollars this week. Um, it's usually thirty five, and that's seven eight six four five nine four nine nine. Or click the link at the top of your YouTube, um, and we'll uh, and you can get in that way. Um, NFTs, man. We said we're going to cover something every day until Friday. So t- today we're going to talk about the difference in gas fees because when you purchase an nft you have to pay for the basic transaction on ethereum or polygon it's only two options to take um yeah. it's just how it is now i mean it's, like we said we're getting in this thing early and when you early everything is you mm-hmm. don't always work you know what i'm saying the right way um so so talk to them real real fast rich about ethereum and polygon the difference and which one we're going to use so you know we we did a little bit of research on ethereum versus polygon and the whole the whole thing with researching both of those is the fact that when you make your purchase in order for uh you to mint that particular nft you have to pay some type of um you got to pay a gas fee. Now, there's some platforms out there like Polygon, which I think is ran off of Solana, um, where the gas fees are either either you don't pay any gas fees or the gas fees are minimal. And that is true. However, b- before I even go into the to the difference and why we're using Ethereum this time around uh-huh. is that with Ethereum, your gas fee and what you pay is based on the time of day that you try to mint that particular NFT. So for instance, if it's one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon, for some reason, everybody is on uh, OpenSea trying to get NFTs at that time. So yes, you're gonna pay more in gas fees. Your gas fee is gonna be 40, 50, 60 bucks, whatever. However, from what I've seen, if you catch, if you're on at let's say six, seven, eight, nine in the morning, um, I've always seen gas fees that was that range between I'd say eighteen and twenty eight dollars, something around there. Uh, as well as later on during the day, your gas fees are around that price. 
And based on the research that we did this morning, the difference with the main difference with Ethereum and Polygon is um, the fact that with Ethereum, there's no other steps that needs that is needed to take place in order for you to purchase that NFT. So what happens with Polygon is because they're not on the Ethereum network, their network isn't as crowded, right? So they can process your your um, or or mint your NFT faster, but there is there is a caveat to it. In order to use Polygon, what happens behind the scenes is that just just like you said, you did the dial up thing, right? <laughs> so there's a bridge that happens or a dial up right. connection that happens between Ethereum and Polygon. So you would still have to purchase Ethereum and then that purchase would then have to be bridged and turned into Polygon and then you can make your transaction. Now, some folks, a lot of the, the big name NFTs, the, a lot of the projects that are sustainable, they don't use Polygon because of that bridge connection, right? So there's not there's a little there's a, a security concern when it comes to that bridge connection so by by all intents and purposes we're not we're not nike or we're not you know a, a big name brand yet so we could possibly utilize polygon because i mean we're trading amongst each other but the question becomes when you go to sell that nft would would that transaction be secure for you right so let's say right, <laughs> you got right, somebody right. you got a hacker that's like yeah man i want to buy your your uh <laughs> your nft and they sit there and because they know that there's that bridge has to take place they go ahead and hack that bridge and they they take all your ethereum <laughs> or they steal your whole wallet right Right. So so that is a concern. And it's one that, of course, you know, the Polygon Network, they're they're working in order to resolve. But the thing that's tried and true right now is Ethereum. So you do pay a little bit more up front. However, there's a little bit more security with it. And on the other side of that, too. When you when you're on OpenSea and you go to resell your NFT. You could actually uh, resell it in every way um, possible. So you can do a make an offer. You can do, you know, straight up, here's the price. You could sell it like that. Or you could also do an auction. So, for instance, if you get an NFT and that player is trending and you want to go ahead and resell it, you have the choice on the Ethereum uh, blockchain to sell it as an auction on open sea so that way your your product goes to the highest bidder so that's 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 some of the reasons so so the two reasons once again is one there's a limitation when it comes to security on on the polygon network mm -hmm. and number two um you you can sell your product on there's no limitation on how you can sell your product so if you want to sell the product based on, um, you know, an auction, just like eBay, you could do that. If you want to have it just as a buy it now, you could do that or a make an offer. You could do that. So it doesn't limit you on how you sell your product and you get the most bang for your buck doing it that way. So so that's that's why we're doing it now um, in, in that particular uh <clears throat> blockchain but of course as time goes on things may change and um you know we we might switch it up based on on what we know and what's out there right 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 <clears throat> so so basically we're going to do this every day to friday in march we're, i mean the 18th friday we'll drop them um 
tomorrow we maybe talk about we got to talk about purchasing them how you purchase them how you get a wallet we kind of talked about it yesterday just trying to get you guys abreast so you won't get discouraged uh because the steps are the steps now early in this process um and it won't be like that two years three years from now you know what i'm saying the process will be different uh things will get better like they always get better like look at the internet now um <clears throat> You just get on your phone and it's already there. You ain't got to dial up one more. So, man, bro. listen, man, I appreciate you, bro. Um, you good? Anything else? No, nah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm grinding right now. So at the job trying to make stuff happen, you know. So gotcha. but definitely like like we mentioned, every day we want to come in and, and drop some jewels when it comes to NFTs. And that way, you know, our community is is more informed about them right. and uh that's going to help with the process uh when we launch on the 18th right Cal, i'll just say people will get discouraged they just got to commit i mean yeah it's true it's true yep. bro yeah Absolutely. it's true it, it, it's, it's true yeah like the same way you get you get fired up to go to jazz and gardens you go buy an outfit you go to it's a damn 30 hour process you know <laughs> what i'm saying to go blow money but you can't, yeah, you, you can't get focused when it's time to get money. Um, so, yeah, on that note, bro, we're going to get up out of here, man. I appreciate you. Uh, um, that's the 18th. And if you're trying to get an IOD squad, 786-405-9499. The number scrolling at the bottom. It's always scrolling at the bottom. And the link is pinned at the top of the YouTube. Bro, listen, I appreciate y'all, man. Um, it's your boy Kane. If you're in here, send me a text, 786-405-9499. Um, and Lady and Sydney, once again, Daddy loves you, man. I'm D. I'm out of here.